Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by TaylorMade. Seems like there's a lot of crosswinds out here, so you know you got to kind of really do a good job of picking the shot you want to hit. And you know I've done a good job of that this week. Um, you know a lot of trouble left with the wind off the right. You got to decide if you're going to hit a draw or you know kind of hold it into the wind. So uh, there's a lot of that going on. Different results this year than, than last year. Is it just a, a second time around this course taking a look at it, or something in your game clicked? Yeah, uh, I, I, a little bit of both. I think majority it's uh, uh, something in my in my game and the belief I have in my swing now. Um, I'm, I'm swinging it different than I did last year. I was trying to play draws last year, and this year I've gone back to hitting fades. It's what I've always you know, grown up doing. Um, so I feel really comfortable with sight lines and visuals and, and that, that sort of thing. And, and it really helps around a golf course like this where you have to be precise off the tee. Okay, so let's compare the two of them. When you look at their careers, Michael Thompson already a win on his resume. That was 2013 at the Honda Classic. So it's been a while since he has returned to the winner's circle. 228 career starts. Richie not quite at 100. He's in his late 20s. Michael's in his early 30s. He's had obviously more top 10s as well. But both of them, judging by their world ranking, could do with a good week. And both of them have put themselves in position to do that at TPC Twin Cities. Let's now talk about the man that is one behind them. That is Tony Finau, who was in a very similar position this time last week. He was the 36-hole leader at the Memorial Tournament. Stumbled a bit over the weekend. It was hard conditions, but mm -hmm. had a 42 across the front line on Sunday. Not the kind of form you need uh, in the final round, which has arguably been his stumbling block. What do you think specifically has stopped him from closing it out? Well, I mean, the final round, I mean, he says he's gotten something out of it, but I don't know how he can when he's ranked, I think it was in the 170th on final round scoring, uh, and I think that's he's got himself in the position, and sometimes for me, I mean, we mentioned it in the pregame, you just have to have that killer instinct inside. you got to have something a little bit that kind of sparks you. He's a nice guy. You can be outside. Nick Price was a guy like that. On the outside, he was very nice and everything, but on the inside, a, a big competitor, but I think once he gets over that hurdle of winning the second tournament, He's going to win four, five, or six of them. He's got the talent in there. The biggest thing is he improved his wedge game. And I think that's one of the things this season that's really paying off. It's paying off this week. A lot of shots we saw yesterday and, of course, today uh, paying off. Got his instructor on the bag this week. Uh, so far, so good. And I think that's going to be a big thing for them Sunday when he's able to sit out there and say, what's Tony's mind like? What's he doing in these different situations? I think for them, they can both learn from that. Boyd's not going to be on the, on the bag very long. It's a temporary thing. But I think for both of them, they're going to see how he handles the pressure. And he's got to say to himself when he looks at the board there are some names up there but he's got the, as far as what I can see one of the best chances of win that he's had in a while we've got some more in a moment on some good news for Boyd Samahays today we'll get to that in just a second but but continue with Tony for a moment do you get the sense given that he's already achieved so much mm -hmm. compared to what his resume says he's just got the one win but he's already played President's Cup Ryder Cup he's no doubt regarded as one of the world's best players if he does break through and get that second victory soon do you feel like it will be a floodgates moment oh for him? absolutely I just think for himself just uh, not that he doesn't believe it but he got over the hump six runner-ups how many top 10 since then we keep asking the question when you're gonna win again I think it's up for a player I know for myself once you get that second win then you continue when you get in there you start expecting to win I think that's the mentality he's got to take in there when he goes into an event. I expect to win, not that I'm trying to win. You mentioned how he managed to take positives from Sunday's round at mm -hmm. Muirfield Village. You also cast your mind back to February when he was two up with two to play right. uh, at the Waste Management Phoenix Open, ultimately lost that in a playoff to Webb Simpson. It looked like, here we go, this is Tony to wrap up. Mm -hmm. It's time for him to break through again, and he didn't manage it. How do you try and reassure yourself after quite devastating losses like that? Well, that's a great question. I remember at Tucson, I three-putted to lose the tournament to Phil Mickelson, and I got myself back in that position in Greensboro, and I said, you know what, be aggressive. Don't bail out on this shot. If you're going to go out, you know, on fire, go out trying hard and be aggressive. And it made a big difference. I went several weeks without sleeping over the loss at Tucson. But once I got myself back in that position, I just said, you know what, let's go for it. I think that's what you have to do. You stay, have, have to stay aggressive in those situations and not maybe hold back on the reins. Okay, well, let's hear from the man himself. Tony Finau is with our Steve Bukowski. All right, Tony. 66 here on Friday. How would you describe your second round play here at TPC Twin Cities? Yeah, really good. Uh, I won worse than yesterday, but I scored it and played a lot better. Um, really clean round for the conditions. I thought it was tough. There's so many holes out there with water that was in play because of the wind. and um, just I, I was happy with, with the way I struck it and made enough putts, and you know I found myself in good position going to the weekend. We saw Boyd struggled on putting some suntan <laughs> lotion on those legs. How did he do as a caddy here on day two? 
Yeah, well, I, I started calling them strawberries and cream because it is white, red, white, uh, like a strawberry parfait. Um, but I think it helped kind of keep things light. You know, looking at it, I was laughing just about every hole. Just I couldn't get get over how red his legs were. Um, but as a caddy, he, he he did tremendously well. You know, I think he knows my game really well. Been together for almost seven years or so over seven years now. So he's been able to watch me play, watch me grow, and um, I think we think about the game similarly. And he's uh, proved to be beneficial for me so far this week. We talked yesterday about the positives you took away from the Memorial. When you see two rounds like this, how does that continue to sort of roll into a ball of momentum heading into the weekend? Yeah, it's always great. You know, when you shoot two rounds in the mid-60s, it doesn't matter how the conditions are playing. You know, you're playing good golf. And, um, you know, it's it's been two really clean rounds for me. And you can always build off that going into the weekend. I find myself in one shot back uh, behind a couple guys going into the weekend, so I know I'm going to give myself a chance to win this week, uh, which is always a great feeling. What's the most important thing you need to do tomorrow? Uh, just continue to roll the rock. Yep, continue to make putts. You know, guys are shooting low out here. A couple guys at 12 under starting the day for me. I was like, wow, they're playing some great golf because it's windy all day. Um, you know, you, f you find that out here. There's two or three guys that are going to play well every week and, and kind of run away from the field, so hopefully uh, that's me towards the end of the end of the tournament. Bogey free 65 here on Friday. How were you able to get it done on such a windy afternoon? Yeah, I just growing up in Oklahoma helps on these types of days. So I kept the ball low and, and kept it in the fairway, hit a bunch of greens and a couple greens I missed were in the right place. So, uh, you know, you got you got to control your ball on days like today. And I was able to do that. An indifferent start for you results wise since the restart. What's sort of coming together here for you this week? You know, it's funny. Uh, this game is, is you're always close to great golf. Uh, you feel like in in the last few weeks, I've I've been close to some great golf, um, and it, you know made a couple good swings. Felt good with a couple swings yesterday, and uh, it just it, it started to click. How do you keep this rolling into Saturday? Yeah, just try to keep doing what I'm doing. Hit a bunch of fairways, hit a bunch of greens. Keep it simple. When you're in a position like this, still halfway home, what are some of the past successes you lean on and maybe look back to that could help? Yeah, so last year uh, I was playing on conditional status, and early on in the season at Palm Springs and Torrey, I was in a similar position going into the weekend, and it was crucial for me to uh, take advantage of those opportunities. And I was able to have a, you know some some decent weekends. I think I think I finished fourth and third in consecutive weeks, and uh, you know, and that was kind of in a dire need to play well and so I uh, I really draw back on on those weeks recently I, I felt really good about my game about my swing the stuff I've been working on but you know I've kind of just been up and down you know I'll make a cut play really well or, and then I'll miss one the next week so it's nice to make two in a row and um, you know like you said just build on you know the good play yesterday and continue it today and I feel like I'm a, a huge confidence player so once I string together a bunch of good rounds I feel like I'm in a lot better spot as if I, you know, shoot 64 one day and then the next day shoot 74. So um, I'm really happy with, with how I played the first two days. And like I said, I'm in a good spot. Speaking of being in a good spot, how much more additional confidence can you get heading into the weekend knowing what you did here a year ago? Yeah, you know, like I said, like I said in the interview yesterday, I feel like the memories that I had, the shocks that I hit last year, they're still running through my mind. You know, as I was out there today, there was a bunch of shots that I remembered you know, me, you know, hitting it really close or hitting a really good shot last year to the same pin. And, um, you know, I think the, the good memories, the good vibes, all that stuff, you know, helps me have a lot of confidence, not only over the shot, but, you know, going on throughout the round and knowing that, you know, the, when the weekend comes, I'll be, I'll be, I think, a lot more comfortable than most people. He sounds so confident, doesn't he, for mm. someone who's just in his second year on the PGA Tour breakthrough here. 12 months ago, fair right. enough, but it was just his third start as a professional. He sounds like a veteran, but you made such a good point yesterday, Jim. It's going to be so different for him as he progresses through the tour this year because he's no longer seeing every stop for the first time. He's got memories. Right. He's got experience. And this week, more than any week, he's got great memories and a winning experience. Well, he mentioned that. He said to somebody, I uh, heard him sitting on the mic, hey, I'm not a Oh, I'm not a rookie anymore. This yeah. is, you know, I'm almost a veteran now. But uh, it, it's true because we went out the early part of the season seeing the golf courses for the first time. But the thing today, he didn't hit it as close as he did yesterday. You know, you look at his greens and regulations and, and fairways hit, they were very close. But he made four, almost 40 feet more length of putts. So the putter saved him a bunch of times. He said he was steady. 
making 12 and 7 footers for par, that gets to be a little bit nerve wracking, even as good a putter as he is. But today, the putter saved him several times. Let's talk about the significance of bogey free. Mm -hmm. So he went bogey free 68 today. Would you rather a bogey? Obviously, you rather the lower round. Right. But how does a bogey free 68 feel compared to a 65, but with a bogey on the card? That's a great question. I think for myself, if I'm making those saves, it builds my confidence. I mean, I'm maybe not as sharp, wasn't hitting as close, but I made the putts when I had to. And he had that pressure on, maybe not Sunday pressure, but he had that pressure to kind of keep things going. And that's the thing when you're defending champ, you gotta be careful not to put the pressure or extra pressure on yourself. But he made those good saves. So sometimes days like today, and you'll have four rounds where you're not maybe as sharp, and he saved it. He turned a 70, 71 into that 3 under par round today. So that was a big uh, big round for him today. Yeah, because he had two bogeys actually on the card mm -hmm. yesterday and a ton of birdies to end up with the 65, 68 today. He's very much in contention. Oh, I yeah. think it's going to be fascinating to see how Matthew Wolf handles himself over the weekend trying to defend on the PGA Tour for the first time. Brooks Kepka one under for the tournament with a cut falling at two under. We will not see him play the weekend for the second time in three weeks. It was another frustrating day for him and you really have to to turn your attention, Jim, as we mentioned, to what happened uh, on the greens. 32 putts today. You look at how he has ranked uh, in terms of his putting. 148 uh, strokes gained in the field. That is not the kind of form we would have expected from someone like uh, Brooks Kepka. Is that the part of his game that concerns you the most right now? Uh, I mean, it's getting to him maybe a little bit mentally. I don't care how good you are. But yeah, three to five feet, he was six of 11. Missed a bunch of short putts. From 48 feet, he was two to five, uh, two of five there. So, I mean, he missed the putts. He short-sided himself a couple times. Times. Very tough this afternoon to try to make that run, but he just never got anything going. It seemed like when he'd make one, he'd give one back. And I think it's just as a player, even as good as he is, it's just frustrating. You know, you don't feel like you're playing that bad. You're just not scoring. I mean, Schwartzel said the same thing. He hasn't played that bad. He's missed three cuts in a row. Of course, he played good so far. So you get in there where you're, as a player, you say, oh, I'm not really hitting it that bad. I'm just not getting any momentum going, nothing to kind of build on. I think that's the tough part for Brooks right now.